at Wollaman Falls. So actually the highest single fall waterfall in Queensland. It's something like 280 metres. Oh, Ooh, look, flat battery. That's no. not going to last long. No, no. I'll turn it off. Try again. again. Try again. Okay, battery is now charged. So. Where to start? Where to start? Okay, it's a bit of a saga. It's always a saga. This is also being filmed like three Later. months after we've done all this because we are that far behind. We also just forgot to film it at the time. I think we were just stressed and annoyed in general. So basically what happened when we were in Alice Springs um, and we we're traveling with the convoy, we got to a, the caravan park and they had people there that weigh your vans. And we just thought, you know what? It wouldn't be a bad idea. We've been on the road for quite a few months. Let's just get weighed and make sure that we're still okay. So anyway, um, they weighed us. We did have to shuffle some things around to sort out the GCM, so that wasn't fine. Yeah. The issue we had was our rear axle was over. So to fix it, we just had to move things to the front of the car, but then we'd have to buy a roof rack and move the spare tire, and it was just too the much pain. of a hassle type mm. thing. Right. You add more weight to move the weight, doesn't really yeah. fix the problem. No. And we, you know, we liked the way the canopy's set up. We didn't really want to have to move it all to fix weights. So basically around that same time, only a few weeks prior, Queensland had announced you could get GCM upgrades for cars after they've been registered, which previously was not allowed. Yeah. So we thought, you know what, we're not that far from the Queensland border. We could just duck in to Mount Isa, get the GCM upgraded and fix all our problems. Dion wants a bigger boat. And we, Always want a bigger boat. And we don't have the weight for that, but um, a GCM upgrade also would increase our rear axle capacity. So we thought, brilliant, Daniel can get the bigger boat. So for clarification there, our rear axle at the moment with the 3950 GVM upgrade puts the rear axle to 2420. Something like that. And we were sitting at about 25 at when we got weighed. Yeah. I think it was 25, 2520. And the rear axle will be upgraded to 2550 with the GCM upgrade. So it would, it would fix two problems. Firstly, it would fix every axle problem. Secondly, we'd have what, an extra 400 kilos of weight. 400 or 600? It's a lot. I think it goes from 6.8 to 7.2 or 7.4. I can't remember, it was a long yeah, while. Yeah, it was a while ago. So anyway, so we just thought, you know what, this will solve all our problems. Plus then they will stop whinging at me for a boat because we can get a bigger boat. Yes. So we rung TJM in Mount Isa and talked to them about it and said, look, how's it going? And they said, yep, it's all been approved. You can't quite submit the paperwork yet, but that's only a couple of weeks away. So we can... Um, get the process started. Get the process started. So we basically said, look, can we install all of the components now and then just have the paperwork sent off once you can do that? And they're like, yep, that's completely fine. We can do that for you. So we thought, great, it's like a... It was like six hours, seven hours from where yeah, we were. Yeah, it wasn't that far. Um, and then I was sort of thinking about it. Now, this was like at one o'clock in the morning. So I was thinking about it. And I was like, you know what? When we had to rush home from the Cape last year, we missed out on the lava tubes. We missed out on the hot springs, uh, porcupine gorge, like cobbled gorge, all those things we really wanted to do. So we thought, you know what? We could kind of just like dart back into Queensland, get the car upgraded, do a little loop and then come back to Darwin and be done and dusted in a few weeks. Yeah, and finish off the north end of Queensland that we didn't get to do last year. Yeah, so that was the plan. So we, we went to Mount Isa. Hi. Dion's in a bad mood. Yeah. This road to get to um, where we're going, Mount Isa, it's bad. It must've been one of the flood affected roads and it's got so, oh, not now, so many potholes. truck went past us before and it honestly sounded like yeah, hail, hail. Yeah. the amount of rocks it threw up yeah we got a couple of stone chips down there so some, i don't know if you can see stone chip there. and there's another one down here we had another one the same size and right on the edge here and she's just split literally yeah. probably been 15 minutes since we got hit and yeah it just cracked the windscreen so yeah looks like we 
we need a new windscreen. Woohoo! Yep. So anyway, one of the pitfalls of these roads. Yeah. Um, so we got to Mount Isa, we went into TJM, took the cars outside, come and have a look at it, can you order the parts, blah, blah, blah. Yep, 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 we can do that. And he was being a bit vague. Yep, vague. He was saying you, that I should order the parts for it. And yeah. I was like, it was while bit... we're here, we'll just find out what I need, get you to order it in and get it done. It was a bit weird. So I sort of pressed the point and I said, I just want you to confirm that once you got, you know, once we pay you all this money and you install all the parts, you will then send all the paperwork off to get it. Um, the GCM increased. Increased on the paperwork for the Department of Transport. And he was like, no, we don't do that. And I said, but when we spoke to you on the phone, you said you could put the paperwork in and then send it off. He's like, no, no, you need an engineer to sign off on the GCM upgrade and we don't have an engineer here. Yeah, so what would happen then is we need to put all year in, wait for the legislation to come through, Yeah. find an engineer in Queensland, because that's where the car is registered, that can approve it, that would then check over the car and approve the paperwork. So you can imagine how annoyed we were when we had driven seven hours or something and because they had said oh yeah we can do it in the next week and a half and we're like great this is perfect so yeah you can just imagine how upset we were that we couldn't get that done so anyway we started making phone calls i contacted the department of transport to find out what engineers in north queensland could do these kind of upgrades and there are only two and they're based in townsville yeah so we thought okay that's more of a detour, but you know, Dion's mum's there, we, we can kind of make this work. So we rung and we spoke to one of Lindsay. them. Lindsay. The first yeah. guy was Lindsay and... So we called him, he was booked out. Then we called, I don't remember the guy's name. Jay Race. It, Jay Race is the company. And he was like, yeah, I can get you in, but not for a GCM. So he basically explained that if we were to put the parts in for a GCM upgrade, the price we would be paying, say TJM to do it, would include them signing off on the GVM upgrade. Yep. But then to have the GCM signed off, which nothing would have to be changed because the parts have already been installed, you would then need to pay like another $1,500 for an engineer to recheck it all. So it would actually cost us more money in the long run. And he said, to be completely honest, it's still months away from being able to be done because even though the legislation has passed, everyone's trying to decipher the legislation and figure out exactly what they need to do to be able to actually change, make these changes. Yeah. So we were like, great, so we can't do that. Uh, so then we sort of thought about it and went, you know what, we've actually got the J-Max rear axle upgrade in this car. Yes. So we looked up online and it said you could get between 2.6 and 2.8 um, capacity. On, on the cruisers. The axle itself is rated up to 3.5. 3? 3.5, something like something that. Something like that, yeah. And we talked to the engineer at J Race and he rang up, uh, up J Max yeah. and asked them what the axle is rated to. And they said, it's rated for up to 35 inch tyres at the three or three and a half tonne. But the engineer said he would approve us for 2.7 so with the 700 kilo constant load springs that we've got. Yeah, because we already have upgraded springs. So basically he said, look, I can, I can get you in in a few days. So we raced down to Townsville. You gonna pat the dinosaur, Hudson? Go pat him then. Show us how it's not scary. It's not real. No, dinosaurs are all extinct. This is the most complete sk 
skeleton of a dinosaur discovered in Australia of the plesiosaur skeleton variety. I probably said that wrong. We're at the Flinders Discovery Center. Yes, Flinders Discovery Center. More dinosaurs for Hudson. Yes. Hudson. What are we looking at today? More dinosaur skeletons. So more dinosaur skeletons? Yeah. 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 Skull of a Chronosaurus. And some footprints. Footprints. Has a gown, Jess. This is probably the smallest of the three. So, from what I've seen since we got here, Winton would have probably been the better one to go to, but that would have been a five hour detour. So, anyway, that's alright. And I want to head towards the Cape, so we're cutting out some of the stuff. We can always do Winton on the way back. Yes, somehow Dale has convinced me to do the Cape trip for a third time. I don't know how this has happened, but anyway. And there's a kids' play area. And that's all Hudson cares about right now. What's up, dude? What's up? Yeah, so we get free reign of looking at what we want without having to worry about Hudson. He's got a play area. Yeah. It's it's so small. So small. This isn't it? A Wouldn't you like a dinosaur for a pet, Hudson? What? Would you like a dinosaur for a pet? A little what, baby one? You want a baby dinosaur? You don't want a big one? No. So today we left Hewenden and we're driving to, oh I just looked at it, Pinarendi Station, I think it's called. So that's up towards the lava tubes in yeah. far north Queensland. So we have finished this section of the dinosaur trail. Yeah, we're... We, we need to get back to Darwin, don't we? We need to get back to Darwin and if we're going to fit in this Cape trip, the Cape trip itself is 1,500 k's and yeah. down 500 k's just to see the dinosaur trail yeah, doesn't, not, doesn't seem worth it. Not worth it. Uh, so anyway, so this is Porcupine Gorge. We're just walking down to the lookout at the moment. It's about 60 k's out of Hewenden. There's enough room to park a caravan. So yeah, you, bring you, it down. you can probably fit, if there's no other cars here, maybe four caravans in here. Good job. So, enough room. And if not, you can park back up the road for walking. And then, yeah, we might go and check out the day use area at the campsite and um, maybe go down to the gorge. So we'll just see how we feel when we get there. Yeah. That's a long way down. Yeah. That's not where we were. Go all the way down there. This is just as walking up hills, Waddle. What? No, I'm just talking about you walking up the hill. You don't mean walking up this stupid hill. Yeah. You get like a. almost a waddle going on. Like 600 stairs. Yeah, it's one and a half k's each way. Well, one and a half hours each way. Something like that. It's worse than King's Canyon. Okay. <laughs> Alright, Jess, what are we doing? So this is the pyramid lookout. Uh, the pineapple, pineapple Pine gorge. <laughs> the porcupine gorge campground. So it's this triangle shaped rock you can see over yeah, there. Yeah, where the rock has just sheared off from erosion yeah. to make a pyramid. Walk down to that water hole. So we're just debating whether we do that because it's 580 stairs each way. And Jess doesn't like stairs, a but lot of stairs. the good thing is your knee normally goes on the downhill, not the uphill. So if you make it down, you should be good to get back up. <laughs> and if it does go on the way down, you turn around and come back up. That's true. That's true. So yeah, that's the. Uh... Uh, there is the pyramid at Pokemon Gorge. I think it'd be worth having a look down there. We've got nothing else to do today, do we? Working. And a three hour drive. Apparently I'll be working tonight. Not unusual.
What are you doing in there? That's a deep hole. <laughs> we'll get him out. <laughs> Ready? And that is to show you the depth of a small hole here. Yeah, there's one over there that they have some branches tied together so you can actually get back out. Can we do By looking that at again? it with the water in there, it's probably about three again, meters, Dad? maybe four meters deep. Yeah, so if you fell in, you'd be stuck. Okay. So, yeah, if you come here, watch your kids because. There's some deep holes from the fall in. Yeah, there's lots. This is the big hole that we reckon is about, what, three meters? Or oh, maybe more than three meters deep. It's at least four meters deep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so the water level you're looking at, at least four meters and then we'll have under the water as well. And they've literally tied the tree branches together. Just to make a rough kind of ladder so that you could try and get yourself out if you could. Yeah. That would not be ideal. And there's no phone service here, so if you fell, that's it. Yeah. You better get away. And then you got a 1.1k walk back up the hill, five yeah, and eighty stairs. Broken ankles and stuff. Yeah. It'd be great. Yeah, awesome day. Really five hundred and forty to go. Thanks for that. <laughs> Two hours and get back and pack the caravan up and leave today. Right, so this is the lava tube. This is the lava tube down near the archway. Unfortunately, they had such a big wet season that we can't go right into it, but I'll give you a quick squeeze. I get my tiny little torch. Can't see much. So I left my big torch with Dale and I forgot to film down here. So this is all water. And it goes all the way up. Might drop a photo in if I can so you can see a bit better, but yeah, you should be able to go all down there. But it's um it's quite cool. Yeah, so Hudson stole my torch. I did have a nice big one. And he had his little little one anyway. To convince him to be quiet while the lady was talking, we swapped torches. And so when I've come back to show you the cave, uh, I have the crappy little torch. I couldn't show you very much. Anyway, there's another one down here, I'm pretty sure. So we'll have a look at that one. This is the archway. Very cool, lots of big trees. There we go, I've stolen the torch from Hudson. So right to the back of this tube, you have right down here. You can normally walk to, but because it's all wet, all of that is underwater from here. food. KFC for the win. Oh. It has been a while. Mm -hmm. God, it is good. I even like fast food, but when you don't have it for like a month. Yeah, we figured out last time I had it was at Port Lincoln, which she's, was yeah, over a month ago. She's actually crazy because we we're in Townsville and that was a month ago. But yeah, there's oh, been yeah. no, no really takeaway and um, 
We're hungry. We got in late. It was a really long day. Yeah, it's 5.30. And we've just gone to Townsville, so yeah. Yeah, because we did that tour this morning and then we're driving in and then GPS got us lost and we're here. We have food. Yes. Yeah. That's it for tonight. See you tomorrow. Okay. He had the car for the day. He did the upgrade. Well, he did the paperwork for the upgrade so that legally we can now carry 2.7 tonne on our rear axle, which means we didn't have to move anything around. No. It's now legal. And I've still got about a... 100, 150 kilos spare on the rear axle if we need it, but we're that close to G, uh, GCM, GCM at the moment. We, there's no point. Yeah, so we can't get the bigger boat, which is the whole reason Dylan wanted to get weighed in the first place, yeah. but we have made sure that that's legal, which is probably the most important part. He was, J-Race was really easy to deal with. He got it all done quite quickly. He actually re-engineered the car for us because this car was built in Victoria. Yeah. And in Victoria, you don't have to submit the paperwork if you change your rear axle over on it. But in Queensland, you do. So we had to pay for a mod plate for the rear axle and then a mod plate for the rear axle to have the higher capacity yes. than standard. So anyway, so that sorted that problem out. Didn't really do much else while we are in Townsville. We just really hung out with Dion's mum, did a bit of shopping. That was it. We, we were only there a couple of days and then we left. All right, so... We have gone an hour inland from Ingham and yep. we're at Wallaman Falls. So we didn't even know this place existed last year when we came up to the Cape. No. But it's actually the highest single fall waterfall in Queensland. It's something like 280 metres. So it's pretty spectacular from everything we've seen. And it has been raining lately, so it should be running. So we'll see what it looks like. Anyway, so let's, yeah. Let's have a look, but oh my God, the road to get, oh, uh, spiderweb. The road to get up here is sketchy as, seriously. Yeah, it just doesn't like hills, but it's no. just a straight drop. Just all these like switchbacks and there was like big cliffs, not a fan. Anyway, we're here now. We'll have a look, see what it looks like. That goes down a long way. No, that does, that's the pool down the bottom there. That's it. So Jess, would you stand under there? Okay, so we were debating on the way up whether you'd stand under a waterfall. So the sign back there said it's 269 metre fall. I said you'd probably hurt yourself because it would feel like concrete by the time it hit you. But now that we're here, it literally looks like it just turns into vapour by the time it gets to the bottom. It's just like this mystical mist, basically. I think it'll be quite nice, it'll be like a really big uh, waterfall showerhead. How hard does that walk down to the bottom? Oh, tell you what, my legs are burning. <laughs> we did it in about 30 seconds because we're good like that. Yeah, no, we, we left the gorge walk platform. Got down to that bridge and Jess's knee's gone, yeah, nope. So now okay, I'm back. Well, we're not, we're not adequately prepared, but yeah, my knee would not have made that. No. Such an old person. Need oh, another brace. Oh, but still a decent view from here. Oh, look, that's fine. People can get past without bloody... 
much better. Much safer. Yeah. Was the tree heavy? No, heavy enough. Would I have been able to move it? Exhaust just fallen off their car. Okay. Someone's on the way. Okay, hang on. You can come and have a look if you want. We'll probably fix it easy enough. I've got metal zip ties. Yeah, no, that's all right. We, um, yeah, if you can do something, can get you on the road. You never know. Ah. Uh, Right, so when we came uphill there were some people on the side of the road and because it was so late we thought we'll just go see the waterfall and if they're still there on the way back we'll stop. And they're still here, we just asked if they're okay and they've said there's someone on the way but their um, the exhaust has fallen off their rental car. So that's not a great day for them and it's on a corner. So he was standing up here like directing traffic so that no one hit the car, which is not ideal. So their friends have shown up? No, it's RACQ. Oh, it's RACQ. Okay, perfect. Oh, that's good. So the exhaust is just on the road? Yeah, so by the looks of it, the mount or something just falling off. So Jeez. it'll either just be a matter of reattaching the mount if it's still there. What is zip or, tie Yeah, well, you have to get... I've got metal zip ties. Hopefully you've got some too. Yeah, you just chuck the metal zip ties on it to hold it up there. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. So it would have just been the rubber boots come off. Yeah. Oh, good. Nice. That's a shit place to have when it happened. Yes. Yeah. All right. Where are we, Jess? Surprise cape trip! You can see the <laughs> sign in the background there. This is the start of the... 2023 cape trip for Trip It Around Oz. Yeah. Oh. Alright, our first carnage on the van of the cape trip. So we're at Cohen. I'm going to show you it's a doozy. down to the bloody beach. Non -fishing. Non -fishing. Anyway, we are driving down currently to the Pennyfather River. Dion wants to try fishing. There is a resident crocodile that lives down there, so... I think I've actually toppled down here. Yeah, so that'll be interesting. Oh, 